Hey, welcome back to the channel. Do you have an original Game Boy that has developed lines in the screen? Well, if those are vertical lines, it's not too difficult to fix it up. Unfortunately, if it's horizontal lines, well, it's time for an IPS screen. But in today's video, we're gonna look at what it takes to remove vertical lines in an original Game Boy screen. So, if you stick around, we'll show you how to get that done. All right, on the bench today, we have a bunch of Game Boys. Uh, got a Game Boy Color and three standards. These came to us from uh, Warp Zone, which is our local uh, used game store. And, you know, he, he got them not even knowing if they were working. So I took a quick peek at them, and uh, with a little bit of love, I got them to turn on. But I decided to do a video today because of a request that actually came in some time ago. So if we take... Uh, this Game Boy here, which is the one we're gonna be working on. And we turn it on. You can see, I've got the contrast purposely dark, but you can see the vertical lines in the display. And this is a usually a completely fixable uh, thing. Um, there's two sets of ribbon cables in this screen. One comes to the bottom, one comes on the side, and that's how it knows which pixel to uh, energize to, to make dark. So while I say the vertical ones are repairable, the horizontal are generally not repairable just because of the way the ribbon's built and it's, it's fragile and it can be broken in a few spots and generally you wind up causing damage trying to fix the problem. But the vertical lines are pretty simple to address. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and get these ones out of the way for now and I'm gonna get this thing apart and uh, you can join me whenever I got the board out all right I think that's all the screws I figured you didn't want to see me fiddling with it uh, you've got six tri wings that hold the rear shell onto the front shell and there's a bunch of uh, Phillips inside on the main board that holds us in place and I think I got them all out so this should lift up unless if we missed one which happens sometimes they hide down in the corners or it's just never been apart before and it's stuck there we go yeah this one uh, a lot of times when I take these apart you know the edges are really Filthy, and uh, this one's real nice. Um, it was it was treated with love, and it was definitely not just sitting in somebody's basement for the past 20 years. But since it has never been apart, it is just being a little stubborn. There we go. All right, there's our screen. Now, while we're in here, since we know this one works pretty good, uh, you know, anytime you take these apart, just go ahead and clean your membranes. A little alcohol, 91% IPA. You can see this one wasn't awful. Sometimes you clean these up and the Q-tip will turn black. But, you know, always clean the membranes off. And I'm gonna set that aside just for a second. And we're going to clean these where they make contact. Yeah, you can see a lot of times these speakers will be rusty from sitting in damp areas. All right, so here we are at the screen. And what we're actually going to do is put some batteries in it. So this is going to get a little bit weird and you need to be careful. And we are going to connect our ribbon back up, which can be a pain. But this ribbon's pretty tough. Just line it up, push it in. And now we don't want this board to short out on this board. So I always just take a paper towel and kind of set it down in there. <clears throat> All right. So here's our screen. And 
you can see the ribbon has it actually has a chip in it and this is the ribbon connected to the bottom there's a ribbon behind it that's connected to this side the problem is, is that ribbon is a two-piece ribbon um, so as you can see this one is fairly thick but the one on the side here is very thin and if you start to lose connections here I honestly don't even try to do this um, in the past I've I've attempted to fix several with horizontal lines and it's about a 90% failure rate. So I don't even try anymore. But vertical ones are, are pretty easy to take care of. So we want to get this, we want to get this little rubber strip off. And this one's actually, the glue and everything is in this one still pretty good. So I'm going to be real careful. You don't want to damage the screen. There we go. Got an edge up. We can peel that right off. We're going to save it because we're going to stick it back on. Just trying to get this bit of glue off here. It usually come off. Most of the time in these Game Boys, this, this rubber strip just falls off. So while we're sitting here, we can take a clean corner and just wipe our screen off. Nothing worse than dust when you put it back together. And we'll probably change, <laughs> yeah. Uh, most of the factory glue on these original ones was, was uh, gonna be dead. So uh, uh, matter of fact, I've got a video I made a long time ago that shows uh, replacing, basically doing a, a cleanup, replacing that lens and how to get the screws out of the back. And uh, I'll link that up above just so uh, you guys can see it. So right now I've got my soldering iron set to about 370 Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And this is why you got to make sure you don't short it out. Our batteries fall out. There we go. Our batteries are trying to fall out. All right, let's put the door back on. All right, we got one loose battery contact or one that's going to need cleaned. All right, so now you can see here there's a few light excuse me, you've got a few light lines and you've got one that's much more noticeable, a whole row of dead pixels. And it's generally just lost contact in this area. So you need to do this on and you're gonna let your iron come up the temp. I've got a curved tip on it, um, just so I'm not using a point. I'm gonna use the back side of this. And we're gonna heat up Sorry if I'm sticking my head in the shot. I'm trying to get away from the glare, the lights, and, and whatnot. But all we're gonna do is come in and heat it. And yes, we're gonna cause a few of these pixels to open up. But as you work it, most of the time, when it starts to cool, It'll come back to life.
You can see I'm just carefully working it. More or less all we're doing is resetting the glue in it. Alright, we got one left over here, it looks like. Being a little stubborn. All right, there we go. Our lines are out. And it actually will improve uh, the stability as it cools. So we're gonna wanna stick this back down. And of course, there's probably not a whole lot of sticky left on it, but we're just gonna put it right back under the glass. And we're going to set that aside and we're going to deal with our lens. So everything's going to fall out because we're going to flip it over. But I like to use a, a flat chisel and make sure you clean up the loose glue. Looks like this one. Most of the glue came up with the, uh, with the screen. Get all that dust away and let's see a box of screens box of lenses game boy advance there's a game boy lenses let's see what else we got in here oh there's a game boy color we might put it on on that one i always try to keep a good selection of replacement lenses all right So, in videos past, when you peel the, your adhesive, make sure that you don't miss the center. Some of it stays behind. A new one will go into place. Now this one has a, a film on top of it. So now we can come back here and we can reassemble. All right, let's just carefully put these together. Make sure that dust is on the outside. And there's a little notch in the speaker that needs to go in the notch in the body. Then we can replace our screws. Now, one thing. There is one hole here that shows do not put a screw in it. If you try to put a screw in there, it's going to go right through the back of the screen. You're going to break your screen. And at that point, then all you can do is change it over to an IPS. So I'm going to go ahead and put our, our screws back in. And uh, eh, we'll just do it fast forward. How about that? All 
right, all our screws are in. Make sure your power's off. And here again, this ribbon's pretty tough. Let's just get it lined up and push it straight in. Now, since our batteries seem to be losing contact, we'll get a couple of screws in real quick. And these are tri-wings. Let's take a closer look at those springs. I didn't see any real corrosion, so I'm guessing it's just a little bit of surface junk. We'll clean it up. All right, as you can see, our lines are gone, and this is just our standard test cart. All right, so that's about it. As you can see, it's not that hard of a procedure, and like I said, horizontal lines, don't even bother with, just plan on an IPS screen. Um, but vertical, it's not too difficult. Yes, when you start first into it, it looks like you're going to maybe make it worse, but you know, keep the iron at kind of a lowish temperature, work it real gentle, and take a step back, let it cool, and it usually almost always comes back to life. So, if you liked the video, give us that thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs down. But make that comment, tell us what we're doing to make things better. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe and you know there is that bell notification if you wanna know when these videos come out and you wanna see more content of, of the stuff that hits my bench. And um, I appreciate you being here. I'll catch you on that next video. Thanks.